Hey athletes, um, one of the issues with training at home with only your body weight or with very minimal equipment is finding a way to progress or make things more difficult. Lots of the emails and the communications we're getting right now are about this is this sucks, I'm tired, I'm, I'm up to doing a, dozens and dozens of reps of this thing and it doesn't feel like it's working. Well, you're right, it's not working. Um, but there's a few ways that we can take almost any exercise and we can make them more difficult, all right? So I'm gonna go through a few of the, a few of the ways that we can, we can do that. I'm gonna show you with some push-ups, but I want you to think about that we can do them with squats, we can do them with some other exercises as well. You should be able to take almost any of these tactics and implement them with other, uh, with other exercises and with minimal equipment. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is an isometric. And so with the regular push-up, um, I'm gonna be, you know, of course, going all the way down to the floor and all the way back up, right? So just to pause, that's where you should start. Can you do the whole range of motion? If you can't go all the way to the floor on a push-up and come all the way back, we need to incline it. Put your hands up on a, a chair, on a table, on, a, on the countertop. When you can do full range of motion for five reps, move to something a little bit steeper, a little bit steeper, a little bit steeper, until you can do them on the floor, okay? If you can't do good ones, admit it and work on them, okay? Full range of motion, your chest touches the floor, okay? All right, so we can do an isometric. Isometric is just a static position, so I'm gonna come down to about a halfway position, and I can just hold this. And this is quite difficult, right? And I'll work up to maybe um, five or six sets of a 10 second hold there. Get to that little halfway position a little bit lower, um, and that's quite challenging. And so you can do some of your sets just as an isometric. Okay, we can also do a regular concentric movement with an isometric hold. And so the isometric hold, you're gonna come on down here, come to the bottom, and then hold for a couple of seconds, come back up, down to the bottom, hold for a couple of seconds, come back up. And that is a really great way of increasing the difficulty. So stick with your five to eight reps of, uh, of a push-up, but start to hold it for two seconds at the bottom, and then three, and then four, and then five. The other thing you can do is go slow all the way down, hold at the bottom, slow all the way back up. And you can start increasing the difficulty by simply slowing down and stopping the movement at difficult um, positions, okay? Um, and that would be what we would call, well, we're bridging into what's called tempo. And so if you have a tempo and you go, I'm gonna do five seconds down, five seconds up, get yourself a metronome. Um, uh, you can get a metronome app for your phone in five seconds down, right? So I'm gonna start here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, right? So you can slow those down anywhere up to about a 15 second slow drop and a 15 second slow rise. It's gonna be plenty difficult. And so all of a sudden the, the world of push-ups is opening up to you, okay? The other thing we can do those of you that are familiar with the hard style method of, of our, we do it with planks and we do it with swings, we do a hard style push up. And so the hard style is just to create a bunch of tension. So what I want you to do, put your hands on the floor, try to turn that floor, like tear into the floor there, pull your shoulder blades together, flex your glutes, flex your quads, flex your abs, and then I'm creating a tremendous amount of tension there, so there's great core involvement, there's great integration, and we're innervating way more muscle fibers, okay? And so that can be a really great way of making the push-up much more difficult for you. I can also just do an explosive push-up. And with an explosive push-up, I'll come down to the bottom, come back up, come off the floor a little bit, right? If you're awesome, you can clap. If you're super awesome, you can clap behind your back. We can also do what's called a power push-up or a power start. And we're essentially, we're just coming from the very bottom. So on a power start, I'm gonna start the range of motion down here, hands off the floor, tighten everything up, put my hands on the floor again, come back down to the bottom. 
yeah, down to the bottom. And so you're having to accelerate out of the difficult part of the range of motion without having any sort of elasticity in the muscles. And so this is a little bit harder than a normal explosive push-up. All right, so I can increase the, or I can, uh, increase the width of my stance. And I can do this with putting my hands further apart than my normal, sho my normal shoulder width. So this is a little more difficult to stabilize. Come down, come back up here. I can also, if you think about like squatting, I can do a narrow stance, I can do an offset stance. And all of those things can be more difficult, okay? Um, <clears throat> I can do limited range of motion. And it seems weird, because I just told you you needed to learn to do full range of motion. But once you can do full range of motion, we can do parts of the range of motion to increase the difficulty. And so I could come down here, drop to the bottom, and then just go halfway, 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 halfway and do all my reps in the bottom half of the movement. And that can be a really interesting way to increase the difficulty. And it's especially good if you have a sticking point or a difficult part of a range of motion to just pull yourself up and down in between all of those um, positions, okay? We can destabilize it. And so you can get a bouncy ball. I have a medicine ball here, but you probably don't have one at home. But I can just get a ball, I can put my hand on a on a bean bag, you can do all kinds of things. Don't you dare say that you can't figure this out at your house, okay? One hand on a destabilized surface, one hand stable, down, back up, okay? Uh, do the same destabilization for left and right. You can also, if you have two, uh, two balls, you could use, use those. If you had uh, a third one, we've seen people put their feet on one and hands on two of them. So we can do those, all right? I can also add resistance. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. And I know some of you have these resistance bands and these are one of the things that are still widely available um, via Amazon or Perform Better. Uh, and this thing's really super inexpensive and very useful, and you're gonna see more of these in our videos, okay? Um, I can put, put this around my shoulders, and this is actually quite difficult to even hold this position. You need to come down, press back up out of it, okay? You can add resistance by putting a backpack, um, small child, any number of things on your shoulders, still do that same good, solid range of motion. Okay, there's some other things that we can do. We can go for reps in time. And what that means, it makes you go a little bit faster. And so set a 30 second clock, see how many push-ups you can do in 30 seconds. Then rest for like a minute and a half, two minutes, do it again. Rest for a minute and a half, uh, two minutes, do it again. And then pay attention to getting more reps in those 30 second windows. And that would be called density training. Trying to get more reps per unit time. And so that's instead of just pursuing reps or pursuing load at a fixed number of reps, we're sort of combining those two things. The, the other thing you can do is increase the range of motion. Put yourself between two, um, two chairs, drop yourself down until your chest breaks the plane of your hands, and then come all the way back up. And we can do that with squatting too, where we go super deep on the squat. We can do it if we were doing a sumo deadlift. There's a ton of ways to do this. So I want you to keep thinking about all of the different ways that we can advance these. Okay, to review, you can do isometrics, holding a static position, you can do an isometric pause, okay? You can do the tempo, the nice slow pace. You can do the high tension one, right? The, the hard style push-up, okay? We can do explosive, like a jump push-up or a clapping push-up. We can do one from a power start where we're starting in that, at the bottom with your chest on the floor, power up and then back down, right? And so we'll call that a, a power start or a power push-up, okay? We can increase the range of motion. Put your hands between two chairs, push yourself back up. You can widen the stance of your hands or stagger them, change them around. I can do a limited range of motion where I just do partials and those we want to do through the difficult range uh, or the difficult part of the range where you're the weakest. We can destabilize them by putting our hand on a ball or an unstable surface. We can add resistance with a band or put a backpack on, or we can do density. You can do as many reps as you can in a unit time. Hopefully, this shows you that you have an almost unlimited uh, repertoire of ways to advance every single exercise. 
I can't wait to have you guys back in the gym, but when you come back, I expect you to be stronger and a better athlete than when you left.